Hello and welcome to the unofficial new player's guide for Beam and G Drive. This is for version 0.24. I'm David NR. Okay, be sure to check the description down below for chapter markers, and we are going to jump into it starting with the launcher. All right, let's start with the beginning. That's right, let's get into looking at the Beam NG Drive launcher. Now, your first option is to launch the game, and that's where 99% of the time when you load the launcher, that's where you're going. That will start the game. The next option, though, is manage your user folder. That's got several options in here. First of all, it'll show you what the current path is to your files for Beam NG. That is very handy to know, especially if you're working with uh, mods or adding any of that kind of stuff, troubleshooting, all that good stuff to go. You can choose a new location. So if you would rather have your user files on a different drive, let's say, then you could choose a new location and then uh, relocate your files to that other drive or that other folder. You can also open the folder in Explorer. So if you are troubleshooting mods or you want to go see what's all in your folder, you can open it here in Explorer. Likewise, uh, you can also reset the location, which means that uh, you can change the location back to the default folder. So if you moved it to another drive and maybe you're having some weird trouble or you just want to do some other troubleshooting or you just want it to revert back to the C drive, then you can hit reset location and it'll go back to that location. Notice that it has move user data. So if you choose a new location, you can have the system move the files for you. Now, if I cancel and I go back to the launcher, you also have support tools. In the support tools, you can clear the cache. That's used for troubleshooting, so especially with textures, but really with a lot of things. And essentially what that does is clear out any of the information that BeamNG is using in the cache to help speed up the game. It also clears up problems you might have. There's also a safe mode, which creates a temporary, absolutely empty, clean folder. So no mods, no add-ins, no changes, uh, anything that you've modified in the game, any settings you have, all of that will be reverted back to a safe mode. You can use that for troubleshooting. Vulcan mode is an advanced graphics mode that some people swear by. They love it. It looks great, acts great. Other people, it kills their machine. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Now there's also a Vulcan mode with safe mode plus extra debug data. So you can use this Vulcan mode uh, as a way to test some things with Vulcan, but also remember it's got safe mode as before uh, up above. It will not have mods loaded. It will turn off certain settings. Uh, that's your safe mode. Plus it'll have some extra debug data uh, used for debugging your game should something be going wrong. Then we also have the verify integrity, and essentially what that does is that compares the files on the hard drive with what the Steam engine thinks your files should be, compares all of those, and will fix or replace certain pieces and parts depending on the integrity. This is mainly used for troubleshooting in case you got something going wrong with your game. If all of that fails, then you can also contact support and click there and that will uh, take you out to their page and you can get some help from them as well. Now, in addition to all of this on the launcher, you also have some options or some things along the bottom. You can go to the dev blog. The dev blog is where you will find the latest information about what's going on with Beam NG. You can also check out the forums, which is a great place to A, get mods, but also B, to go for troubleshooting uh, from other users. The devs are also in that forum as well. In fact, there are several forums that you can take part in. There, there is support. They got a Discord channel, their Twitter account, their YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram accounts as well. All of that here from the launcher. Of course, like I said, you're going to spend most of your time launching the game. So let's get to it. All right, now once you have launched the game, you're taken to the main menu where you can do free roam, which is just what it says. You can go into free roam, pick any of the maps that come with the game or that you have downloaded as a mod. All right, 
So that's free roam. You also have campaigns. Campaigns are a series of tasks that you must complete in order and you get uh, scores or you've got certain times that you've got to beat. And as you can see, there are about four or five that are included in the game. Then you have scenarios, which are like campaigns, except scenarios are kind of one-offs. It's just a one thing. So those are scenarios. You also have time trials, which is really cool. A time trial allows you to choose a map. So for example, I can pick a map and then I can pick a pre-designated track. So I can choose a particular track and then I can go in here and I can choose which vehicle that I would like to have run on that track. And you will be given checkpoints you've got to run through in order to try to get the best time in the time trial. There's also a section called bus routes, which is similar to uh, time trials. However, they are bus routes. And so, for example, I can pick West Coast USA as the map. And then once uh, I choose the map, I can go in here and there are preset routes that you can take. So I will take maybe Central Hospital. Sure, why not? And then, of course, you get to pick which bus that you want. Uh, in this case, there are several to choose from. So I choose a bus, and then you hit play, and away you go. There's also a section in the main menu called Light Runner, which again is set up very similar to the time trials or the bus routes. However, it is in a very futuristic, neon-ridden track and cityscape, and your car has glow features, and it is really cool. And we'll look at that uh, at some point here in the video as well. You've got the track builder, which allows you to go in and make your own tracks, which is very, very cool. There's a career mode coming. It's not there yet. You also have the option for replays, which allow you to record what you're doing in BeamNG and then play them back. Uh, and it, then at that point, you could record your plays with your screen recorder. And then if you want to post those on YouTube or share them, whatever you want to do. Repository is where you go for your mods. Then, of course, you have a credits screen and you have various options. Also from the main menu is where you can go to quit the game if you're done playing. Click on that and that will exit the game for you. All right, let's get into the options menu. You can see how different configurations, different options for the game come into play. Now, I'm not going to go into any of these in detail. This is just a high level overview, but I wanted to give you an idea of some of the things to look for when you are in the options menu. First option we have over on the left is graphics. Now we start off with effects such as anti-aliasing, ambient occlusion, light rays, bloom, depth of field. Essentially, if your game seems to be lagging a little bit or it's not quite up to par, then you can uh, disable or enable these as you see fit. Likewise, there are quality settings. You've got some presets from lowest to ultra, but then you can also go in here and change any of these settings that you want to for a custom experience. Again, depending on how your game is behaving, you may want to adjust these accordingly. You also have things like grass density. You can knock this down and you won't have so many blades of grass waving in the wind or you keep it cranked up all the way and it'll have all the blades. <laughs> there you go. Uh, same thing with tire marks, dynamic reflections. You can uh, enable or disable that again, depending on your performance. And then also the resolution, the update rate, detail, and distance of those reflections. Different settings that you can play with. You also notice that down here at the bottom, there's a debug section. Bounding boxes, disable shadows, wireframe mode, and you can also change visualization options. You can also hit this button down here, toggle to show FPS, if you want to see your frames per second, among other details. As you can see, if I click on that, not only do I get my frames per second, but I am getting all kinds of other details throughout the game. So you can turn that on, turn that off. It really helps with uh, your troubleshooting. The next menu option down is display. And so this is how you want the game to be played. You can do full screen, you can do windowed, you can also do borderless window. Which monitor do you want the game to show up on? What's the resolution, refresh rate, all that other kind of stuff. 
Again, you can play with these settings depending on your performance. The overall user interface. Do you want custom vehicles to be in the vehicle selector? Basically, um, if you create custom configurations yourself and save those, then do you want those to show up in the list of vehicles when you are playing? That's an option. Unit system, whether you want metric, British, custom, or imperial. And then uh, you have things like automatic mod updates. So when you subscribe to a mod, do you want that to automatically update? Uh, how many downloads at a time? Do you want the uh, rich presence? Also, do you want in-game mission markers? You can uncheck that if you don't want the mission markers showing up in your game. Again, this is things you can toggle off and on. There's also a browser UI, and you can uh, play around with those settings as well. We have language settings. You have automatic. It detected English for me, but you can see we have other official translations. And then if you want to, you can agree and enable community translations, which will allow you to use translations that were done by the community. They may or may not be accurate, so your mileage may vary. Audio settings. How many voices do you want uh, in the game? Do you want to use stereo headphones? I'm actually kind of curious why that's not checked. But anyway, <laughs> stereo headphones. And then, of course, your various volumes. You can adjust those as you wish. Controls is one of the most detailed settings that you have in the game. And that is because... The bindings are telling you which keys do what things. And each vehicle has its own set of bindings. So, for example, in some vehicles, O will drop down the tailgate or open the back doors or whatever. Uh, you might have uh, an airplane mod where uh, T and G are the accelerate and decelerate, and F and H are turning. You can set those how you want to. Likewise, if you're using a controller, then when you plug in a controller, these will also be set accordingly. Again, vehicles have their own particular settings. Now, some of these are pretty consistent across vehicles. For example, headlights are N. You have fog lights is alt N, and if you have a shift N, that would be your light bar, so like police lights. Okay, So there's all kinds of different bindings, settings in there. That's for vehicles. You also have a general one. So for example, J is to pause the J beams, uh, quitting the game, uh, entering photo mode, all kinds of different things that you want to do for your key sets. Under gameplay, you've got all kinds of other options. You want to toggle the mini-map. Uh, you can mission accept actions. There are couplers. Uh, for example, if you're going to hook up a trailer, the default is L, and that will allow you to hook up trailers to your vehicles. So a whole bunch of other options in here under gameplay. You also have various camera settings. So there are uh, things you can do, for example, um, you can rotate the camera up, down, left, right uh, with your number pad or with a, uh, if you've got a game controller, you can use one of the sticks to rotate the camera around or however you set that up. You'll notice that you can also use the number pad to change through various camera angles uh, as well. All right, so all kinds of settings in there. Menu navigation, hit escape, that brings up the main menu. F1 is help, and there are some other options in there as well. Slow motion, very helpful, very fun to play around with. And um, you can toggle slow motion, alt up, alt down. I usually use the alt left and right um, because I like to set the actual slow motion speed and or speed it back up again. So again, that's alt left and right. There is a replay mode where you can hit alt R that will automatically start recording everything that's going on in the game. And then when you play it back, you can actually view what you've done from different angles 
in the game. So it's uh, very cool, very fun for replaying scenarios that you set up or situations. I don't want to call them scenarios, situations that you set up. Uh, and then you can also record those with a screen recorder and have multi-angle replay action. Very cool stuff. There's also the world editor. So you, there are all kinds of key bindings that go along with the world editor. We will touch lightly on the world editor in this uh, beginner's guide, but that delves off into a whole nother aspect of BeamNG. Uh, you also have the flow graph editor. I honestly have never played with flow graph editor before, but it is a way that you can connect different uh it's a way that you can connect different scripts, different triggers, different things to happen depending on what's going on in the game, whether somebody you know runs over a particular point, passes a particular point, um, meets a particular goal. That's all part of flow graph. There's also general debugging. So, for example, if you want to open up the console uh, to see what's going on in there, then that is the tilde. Or you can, um, a, a handy one is to, uh, you can reload the UI, which is F5. Um, and I don't know where, nope, that must be a different one. Alt U is very handy for hiding the uh, graphical interface on the screen. So if you want a clean screen, no um, speedometers, no other mini maps, no nothing, you can hit Alt U. And then you can also uh, hit Alt U again to turn it back on. Vehicle debug things like sh Control Shift R will reset, uh, will reload all vehicles. Uh, then you have things like um, if you want to cycle through the physics skeleton, that is Control B. Uh, you can also cycle through the node visibility, which is Control M. Again, all sorts of different key bindings here in controls. Under gameplay, you have competitive scenario conditions. If you, <clears throat> man. <clears throat> under gameplay you have competitive scenario conditions that is if it's checked then you must use the vehicles that are come with any particular scenario if you uncheck that box it actually lets you change out vehicles so you can change a vehicle that's in a scenario so if you're playing for example a chase scenario and you want to swap out the police car for a different police car you can do so you can also have this for multi-seat for this session. That is if you're going to play local game player. Um, and again, you have other options in here. ABS mode. Are you using driving assists? Vehicle behavior. Traffic. You can have the amount of vehicles that get spawned in when you spawn in traffic. Automatic. Automatically does it based on uh, certain parameters of your computer, the CPU, the RAM, GPU, that kind of stuff. Uh, if you do auto, otherwise you can crank this up and you can put in... Uh, I think, well, this has up to 12, but I believe you can even do more than that. But again, you're going to want to be careful with that depending on what your computer can and can't do. Uh, do you want mods to be able to spawn for traffic? Do you want to do vehicle polling, which essentially allows you to um, have, it allows you to spawn more vehicles, but it only shows them based on what memory you have available. Again, different things you can play around with in here. Uh, and then you can also turn on simplified collision physics if you find that your game is lagging when vehicles crash. So you don't get quite all of the breakups, but it's it's still pretty fun. <laughs> all right, so the last thing we're going to talk about here, well, um, so we got camera and we got other. So under camera, uh, you've got the different cameras, whatever cameras that you had enabled up above then you will have a setting, a separate section for each of those camera types. And you'll notice that there are uh, key bindings or there will be uh, keypad or uh, uh, gamepad bindings. Uh, you can also change different uh, settings here. For example, in the driver, automatically center view on release. If this is checked, then when you go to t look left or right, as soon as you let go of the button, it will automatically recenter forward. Frankly, I find that annoying. I'm going to turn that off. Actually, uh, I, you know, if I'm looking right, I want to keep looking right. All right, that's just me. Uh, and then you have other, and there are other things in here. Uh, allow controller input and force feedback when the window focus is lost. Hide the steering wheel if you don't want to see the steering wheel in game. Uh, use your Steam name for your license plate. You can have that or not. 
again, other utilities. The outgauge support, by the way, is your ability to drive a vehicle using your mobile app, which is very cool. Uh, and so there are other features in here under the other. So that takes us through the options menu here in Beam NG Drive. All right, let's talk about free roam. This is probably where most people spend most of their time when they're playing Beam NG Drive. In free roam, you will be brought to a screen that has a list of the possible maps that are available to you. Maps that come with the game will either have the automation circle logo or they will have the Beam NG Drive logo. That means that those maps came with the game and were provided by the devs. If you have maps that do not have either of those logos, then those maps were custom made. They are mods that were downloaded uh, to the repository or they are levels that you created yourself if you get into uh, your own map making. So when you want to choose a particular map to start on, then you click on that map. Uh, actually, I'm going to go back. Uh, let's pick um, East Coast. So when you pick a particular map, generally there are more than one spawn point. There is more than one spawn point available, and you can choose where you want your vehicle to spawn into the game. So for example, if I want to start at the gas station parking lot, then I can start at the gas station parking lot. I can either double click that, or I can click, click it one time and click spawn. All right, once you are brought into the map where you told the vehicle to spawn, this is basically sandbox mode. At this point, you can drive around uh, inside the environment and pretty much go where you want, do what you want, crash all you want to, do all the good stuff that BeamNG is known for. Now, when you first spawn in, you are spawned in by yourself. So, you will not... But flashing so uh, so there won't be any traffic or anything all right also uh, r right now if I go to uh, my options under user interface there is in-game mission markers if I check that box and we go back then I should have various markers in the game and if I'm not mistaken yeah there's one there you will see that there are markers that come up in the game that allow you to uh, play and take part in various missions so for in this case in this case this one happens to be a bus driver uh, mission so if I wanted to do that then I could pull up the details for that and I could jump in here and tell it to play that scenario or that mission. And there are missions all over the map. Speaking of the map, if I hit the M key, you'll notice it zooms out and it shows me where my vehicle is and I can find all of the different points of interest and the different uh, missions that are available. And so if I wanted to do a particular mission, I could click on it. And if I right click, nope. Okay, if I click on it over on the list, sorry, this gets updated. Um, but if I click over it on over on the left, you'll notice that it gives me a GPS path. And likewise, I can, when I hit escape, then you'll notice that it is showing me the GPS path on the road itself, guiding me to where that mission is. So in-game missions, very cool. Uh, a, a fun way to add new dimension to the gameplay. Again, if this is something that you want to do. If not, then I can go back out here. As I mentioned before, in the options for the user interface, I can turn off the in-game markers. And then when I go back, the in-game markers are no longer in play. Now, my GPS is still set up for this. Okay, well I can click on the path. So when I click on the path, now my GPS marking is gone. Also, while you're in free roam, 
there are some keys that you uh, will find very handy that we, if you went through the uh, options section of this video and we went through the key bindings. So for example, uh, the various numbers across the top of the keyboard, this is my orbit camera. Uh, I press number one. Number two is the driver camera. So I can get in the car, look around, all that kind of good stuff. Three is a hood cam. Four is external, which is BeamNG's own like TV cam. And this will actually change angles as you go along. Don't mind the shadows. That's just because of the quality setting. You, you can tweak that in your own game as you need to want to. Um, then I've got a relative camera that you can play around with. There's all kinds of different cameras you can play with. Uh, as you notice, I'm spinning the camera around. I'm holding the right mouse button and moving the mouse on my mouse pad. And that will allow me to swivel that camera around. Likewise, I can use the numpad and I can use the numpad 1 as I look behind. I can use numpad 3 to zoom out. 9 will zoom in. Uh, I don't know what 7 does, to be honest with you. 5 will recenter the camera. All right, so there, and again, there's all kinds of different uh, options, interfaces. Uh, alt U. So over in the corner down here, you see I got the speedometer and some other setting, uh, some other visuals on the screen. If I hit Alt U, that turns those off. So now I can play the game, what I call kind of pure mode. Right? There's nothing on the screen. I can hit Alt U and turn that back on again. Now one of the coolest features of BeamNG in free mode is the radial menu. When you hit escape, you should have this radial menu that pops up in the middle of the screen. And we're going to talk about the radial menu and what it does. So with the radial menu, there are all kinds of different options. Uh, first one I'm going to talk about is AI, and that is for traffic and other you know, bot vehicles. So if I click on AI, right now the only option I have is to... Uh, is, is a traffic option or to go back. So if I hit traffic, then this is going to be, do I want to spawn traffic with a police car? Do I want to spawn traffic without a police car? Do I want to stop the traffic? Should there be traffic already on there, which there's not now, but if there were, then we could stop them from doing whatever they're doing. Likewise, I can hit the trash can and I could remove the traffic. So for the sake of argument, let's spawn traffic with the police because why not? All right, once traffic is spawned in, Oh, you almost backed into a police car, dude. Um, traffic, the, the number of vehicles that get spawned in is based on the algorithm that the game uses to figure out your CPU, your GPU, your RAM, all that kind of stuff. So depending on what your computer can handle or what BeamNG thinks your computer can handle, that is how many vehicles it will spawn in. Now, the other thing about AI is that when you set traffic, traffic will spawn as you drive around. So there's not a set number or, or there's not set traffic in the game. As you keep driving around, more traffic will spawn in and the other traffic will despawn. So just kind of be aware of that. Well, we got a big truck here. That's pretty cool. Oh, there's the popo. Now, speaking of the popo, just to show you what we got going on, I am going to cause a little bit of a problem. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get the police to whoop. There we go. Okay. So if I just tag the police here, bump. Oh, now he's after me. Oh, and now I crashed the police. Oh, and then I'm in a ditch. This is the worst situation ever. All right. Well, at this point, the police are probably going to bust me. There we go. So I got a ticket. And my infraction is a police collision. Although, really, I should have gotten reckless driving. Look, you can drive away now. No, no, I can't. Okay? I can't drive away. Uh, by the way, when you're in the game, you can hit the home key, and that will reset your position back to your starting position or wherever you told the game to start. Did you see that van, like, despawn while I was driving? That was weird. All right. So, we've got traffic in the game. I'm going to pull over here. I'm going to pull up the radial menu. Now, when I click on AI, you're going to see I have different options. Uh, I can tell AI to chase me, and that will tell 
all of the vehicles in the game to come after me. Uh, I can also do follow me, which means that the traffic will attempt to stay behind me and follow me wherever I go. Then I can also do flee, which means everybody runs away from me. I can also tell traffic to stop. Oh, that dude is speeding. I can also tell traffic to stop, or I can tell traffic to drive around randomly. Now, you'll notice that there is also the traffic light here. If I do that, then this takes me back to that original traffic menu that we saw where I can either spawn in new traffic or I could delete all the traffic or I could tell the traffic to stop. For example, if I hit stop traffic, then you'll notice everybody stops what they're doing, right? AI is no longer concerned. So now if I bring up that AI menu and I go to traffic and I tell it to start the traffic, once again, everybody comes back into the game. <clears throat> now, in addition to the AI, you also have things like powertrain and you can, so you can go into the engine. Clicking it one time will turn off the engine and clicking it again will turn the engine back on. Um, you can set it whether you want to uh, set your ESC for the different settings here. You can also go to manage. Manage allows you to do things like I can clone this vehicle. So if I hit clone, boom, now there are two of them in the game. And technically I'm driving this one. The other one is just kind of sitting there because I haven't told it to do anything else. I don't know. Let's just see real quick. If I go into traffic, I have to start. Yep. So I can tell it to start traffic and now there's another orange bastion in the game just driving around. <laughs> All right, so also under manage, uh, I can go to the original spawn point. I could select a new vehicle if I wanted to. I could remove my current vehicle. Um, I can set the home. So remember before, if I hit the home button, right? Oh, well, actually, the reason why this did not spawn back at the garage is because when I, whenever you spawn in a new vehicle, that becomes the home. Wow, that dude nearly clipped me. Um, that becomes the new home position. Uh, that gets a little weird, but you'll you get the hang of it after a while. Then you also have electrics. So whether you want to turn on headlights. So if I do headlights on high, you'll notice that my high beams are on. A little hard to tell because it's not nighttime. I got my low beams, or I can turn off my lights. <coughs> I don't have um, a light bar on this vehicle. If I did, then it, I could trigger that. But I do have signals. So I could do right signal, left signal. All right. I can also put my hazards on. All right. So different things you can do inside this radial menu. Then, of course, you have things like fun stuff, which is awesome because with fun stuff, you can do things like deflate the tires. So I can go back in here, come back to fun stuff, and I could, um, I could do hinges, which means anything that is connected by a hinge, I just broke all the hinges. Likewise, I come back into fun stuff, and uh, I can break everything. So hinges is pretty much doors and trunk. I'm not even sure it's hood. Break everything means if it's something that can be separated from the vehicle, then it's going to be separated from the vehicle. Again, I can hit home. I can fix everybody up. Other fun stuff. I can set the vehicle on fire. This car is on fire. Or if you really want to do some, then you can do a boom. <laughs> <laughs> we just exploded while the cop went by. Look at that. And so our car is on fire. Now, likewise, I can go into fun stuff, and I've got the fire extinguisher. I can extinguish the fire, and, I mean, things are still not happy. So, you know, there's that. I think you can actually repair. No, 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 you can't. <laughs> so to repair the vehicle, you can just hit home. We'll call it good. <laughs> so that is the radial menu for free roaming in Beam NG Drive. Now, different vehicles have different controls. So, for example, 
if I were to change out this vehicle, so I hit escape, I'm going to go to vehicles, and I'm going to pick a different vehicle. For the sake of argument, let's pick a let's pick a D series pickup truck, and let's pick. Uh, I want one. I know you're like, dude, it doesn't matter. Just pick one. Okay, let's, let's just pick this one. So when you go to pick a different vehicle, you have different options. I can spawn in a new vehicle, kind of like we did with cloning, but this will spawn in a brand new truck. Or I can tell it to replace the current vehicle. And when I tell it to replace, now my orange car is gone. Oh, there's a red bastion. Uh, the orange truck, I mean, my orange car is gone now. It's a truck. You'll notice that up in the upper right-hand corner, there is a menu up here that shows you what the different key bindings are depending on the truck. Now, this says, you know, bed tilt up, extend the bed. Well, this is just a pickup truck, so it doesn't have any of that bed extension. However, I can hit O, and it will release the tailgate. Another thing you can do in BeamNG, which is kind of cool, is when you are in the driver mode, you can hit the F key, and that will take you out of the car and put you in walk mode. And so I can walk around, and if a vehicle has the option to be able to click and open something, then you'll notice that the hotspot lights up green. If I click on it, then I can, in this case, open the tailgate or I can close the tailgate. Again, I can walk around, excuse you, and when I come back to the front door, if I hit F, I will get back in the car. So, lots of cool stuff you can do in the game. Okay, we are peeling out in our truck. Awesome, all right, so that is, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, you did that. What? You're the one driving like a crazy person and I'm the one who gets in trouble. What is up with that? I, I don't think I don't think I should get ticketed for that, man. But I did. So there you go. Oh, great. You're probably going to come after me again. Oof. I, I can drive away. Yeah, that's... Use that term loosely. <laughs> By the way, one of the other things you can do here... You'll notice there is a menu across the top. When I hit escape, uh, then you get a main. You can go back to the main menu. If you want to go back to the main menu, you can bring up the map from here. You can also jump into your mods. So if you need to jump into your mods from here, you can also do vehicle config. And the vehicle configurations are available depending on what vehicle you have selected. So right now I've got my D series. Let me let me do this. Let me let me pull him back. So I've got my pickup truck, and you'll notice that on this particular pickup truck, I do not have a tow hitch. So one of the things I could do is I could come up here to the vehicle config, and you'll notice that there's an, a drop-down arrow here for frame, and you notice that the tow hitch is empty. So I can click on the drop-down here, and I can say, hey, I want a receiver hitch. And then when, again, I hit escape, then now I've got a receiver hitch, which means that then I could tow a trailer if I wanted to tow a trailer. Likewise, under vehicle config, there are tons of options depending on the vehicle. What kind of fuel tank? Does it have electronic stability? Uh, what kind of drive shaft does it have? Then you'll notice that there are things like, uh, here's the bed. And what are the options for the bed? So I could have a left bed accessory, which is a long range antenna in this case. And boom, I got a big antenna uh, swaying in the wind, as it were. Um, the bed accessory, what do I want to have in the bed itself? You know what? I think we should have, uh, you know, I think we should have armchairs. Why not? There we go. Two armchairs in the back of the truck. <laughs> so you can set your vehicle up. Uh, however you want to. You can change engines, you can change bumpers. Everything, or most everything, is configurable inside this game. The other thing you can do is that you'll notice that a lot of the vehicles also have a tuning option. So here you can do things like uh, setting up the force feedback for that particular vehicle. You can also uh, tow trim the front uh, wheels. You can also adjust the toe. You can adjust the camber. I mean, there's just all kinds of things. You can adjust the tire pressure. 
all kinds of cool stuff that you can do in the tuning, and each vehicle has its own uh, tuning options. Likewise, you can also change colors. So, for example, if I decided I want this to be a blue truck, then I can do blue, and then depending on what secondary options your truck may or may not have, or your vehicle, it doesn't have to be a truck, uh, you may be able to choose other colors. So, for example, if I choose arsenic green for this, in that case, it happens to be for those stripes. So, in this case, my blue truck I've changed the stripes to white. And then if there is a third colorable option, then that could show up as well. And for the sake of argument, we'll pick rose pink. I don't think that changed. Oh, yeah, that did. That changed the grill in this particular case. So, yeah, okay. So we can change the grill to, why not, <laughs> blue and orange. That's beautiful, Dave. <laughs> Let's make it blue. All right, there we go. Uh, so... You'll notice that we have these different options here for the vehicles. Likewise, notice that there is a save and load option. So if I decide I really like this configuration and I want to be able to use it later, I can click save and load and I can click up here, give it a file name. Truck with chairs, tell it to save it. And now that vehicle will be an option that uh, I can load into my game. Very, very cool. So uh, what I can do is I can go to my vehicles. I just want to show you this real quick. And if I go to my, if I go to D series, then truck with chairs is now an option based on my custom vehicle. Very, very cool. I like it a lot. Likewise, so as we continue, uh, you can also mess around with the environment. So you can make it sunrise, you can make it noon, you can make it afternoon, or you can slide this any way you want to. There's sunset. I don't know where the sun is. Look, we are creating a traffic jam. Okay, you know what? Let's let's get off the road. Let's let's move over here. There you go, folks. Sorry for the hold up. Oh, you wrecked that dude. I saw that, man. I saw that little COVID. I saw it. Holy cow. Police are everywhere. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, noon. Um, you can also you can also have it play the time of day if you want to. So it'll actually cycle day and night. Why is that truck just sitting there? Uh, uh, as you wish. Uh, you can also change your cloud speed. You can also bump up cloud cover if you want to make it cloudy. You can also increase fog density if you want to make it foggy. And then you can also mess around with gravity. So right now, of course, the default is Earth gravity, but I could do zero gravity, and we are going to float up in the sky along with everybody else. Oops, we lost our cushions. Uh, you can also do moon gravity, and again, there's all kinds of different, uh, different gravity settings. Uh, you also have the simulation speed, and this is the actual speed that you are playing. So if I hit two times, then everything is going to be sped up twice as fast, or four times. Then the whole game is going to play four times faster. Likewise, you can also set your tire marks, whether you want them clean. You can, I guess, save and load tire marks. I've never done that ever. But anyhow, that is what you can do inside the environment. Scrolling along the top again, we have photo mode, which takes you into photo mode, which allows you to, I can hold my right mouse button and I can move my camera around. I can also do things like change the field of view, right? I can also change the camera shutter speed. We can also do a roll if we want to roll the camera one way or another. Yeah, that ought to make you sick. You can also change the time of day for the picture, should you want to. There are also some depth of field uh, controls. So you can do near blur, which is going to blur things in the foreground. You can also do far blur, which is going to blur things in the background. You can change your focal distance, your aperture. And then you can also play around with contrast and the quality of the picture, et cetera, et cetera. So there's all kinds of things you can do. And then when you're ready to take a picture, you can just click the take screenshot. The key about that is once you click it, don't touch anything. Because if, if you move in the middle of taking a screenshot, then it will actually move with you. So see, I moved. So now 
it took the screenshot somewhere in my moving. So you want to be careful of that uh, when you are doing that. When you're done, you can click the X, and that will get you out of photo mode. Um, we also have UI apps, and UI apps are the little things that show up all over your screen. And what's cool about this is uh, you can actually change the different layouts as you want to and you can also create your own layout if you want to so i can edit my layout here and i can click on add and i can add an app so for example if i wanted the um i don't know let's just say we want the compass all right so you notice that the compass spawned in over here it's got these icons in the middle i can drag this compass wherever i want to for the sake of argument let's just put it down here and then in the upper corner i can hit the green done button and now notice i have a compass on my screen so that as i am driving around and as i am turning then the compass will also turn letting me know which way I'm going. And as you saw, if I go back into the UI apps and hit the pencil and the plus to add an app, there are tons of apps. And I just recommend you can get in there and play with them or you can search for them on the internet. And it'll tell you, you know, what apps do what and how things uh you know, how you can play with the different apps that are in the game. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is the campaign section. Again, there are uh, four that come with it, and I believe you can download uh, additional ones, uh, but you can choose one of these uh, campaigns, and I'll just start with Senseless Destruction. And as I mentioned before, it is a series of scenario situations that you work through, and ultimately you end up with a final score. So uh, you just click on it, or you can double-click on it, and that will launch your campaign. All right, once you're brought into the campaign, it's going to kind of go through this little intro screen. It'll tell you the name of the campaign. It'll tell you which uh, kind of which leg of the campaign you're on and then give you some idea of what you're supposed to be doing. So uh, once it's ready to go, you'll see start <clears throat> and you'll get a countdown. And in this case, we are supposed to drive this truck off the cliff, do as much damage as we can, but at the same time, get as far down into the valley that we can. Oh, there is some serious destruction there. You'll notice that as you play through this, uh, the camera itself automatically changes. That's built into the campaign itself as we go tumbling, rolling, and let's see, I don't think we're going to be quite as low as we can get, although that should not be too bad. Oh, yeah, look at that. 648 out of 700, and we did 300 points of damage. So when you're done, you have an option to retry this one if you didn't particularly like your results. You can go to the menu, which will take you back out to the menu. You can pick something else to do, or you can hit next, and that'll take you to the next section of senseless destruction in this case all right so once again you are brought into the general overview that tells you uh, what to do it kind of gives you an idea as to what's happening here in in this particular part of the campaign once you hit start then you just start accelerating and that will get you going so we're going to take off we are drag racing this dude right here now, things are not looking good for us. I mean, come on. You're talking about an old school American muscle car. That bad boy is gone, but he explodes. And at this point, whoa, then it is up to you to continue the race, slow down. Oh, I did take some damage, though. Man, I took some damage. Look at that. That's not going to be good. Well, yep. So our time was Pretty decent. I could have been a little faster, but our damage, not good. Minus 67 because I ran into the pieces and parts. And so you just keep continuing through the rest of this campaign, or you can go through the other campaigns that are available to you. 
The next thing we're going to talk about are scenarios, and there are a whole bunch of scenarios that come with Beam NG Drive. Now, you can also download scenarios uh, off of the repository, so really the possibilities are endless, and as I mentioned earlier, scenarios are pre-designed mini tasks. All right, so for example, here is Goliath, and a semi-truck is causing havoc on the highway. We must stop it at all costs. All right, here you go. When you are dropped into a scenario, you are given uh, a title screen here. Depending on how the scenario is set up, you may or may not get a, any kind of a panning camera type situation. But you see the description over on the side. It starts just like we did with the campaigns. Once you start to accelerate then that will trigger the start of your scenario. And basically, scenarios are the pieces of the campaign. When we did the campaign earlier, uh, if you watched that part, then you had a campaign that was made up of a series of scenarios. The scenarios themselves here are just standalone, beat your task, accomplish your goal, whatever that happens to be. <clears throat> In this particular case, we are supposed to take out an 18-wheeler with our little SUV here in Beam NG. So let's see if we can see if we can do that. There he is. We got to take him down, and we're gonna crunch him right here. Oh, that may or may not work. Oh yeah, I think that'll be good. I mean, granted, we did some damage to our vehicle, but uh, oh no, 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 no! Quit, quit, quit moving! Quit your moving! Quit your moving! Three, two, one, and there it is, success. It would have been better had I stopped him from moving altogether. Great job. That was an intense chase, but the truck was no match for your driving skills. So the other thing with scenarios is I can play this again, or if I don't want to play this one again, I can go back to the scenarios tab, and I can pull up a different scenario and play through those scenarios. Now, some scenarios like this one here with soccer, it shows the little two and a square. That is for multiplayer, uh, multi-seat multiplayer, meaning two people sitting at the same computer using a keyboard, mouse, or uh, gamepad, whatever that means. Each of you will have a way to control a vehicle in that particular scenario. There are also uh, demolition Derby, uh, as you can see here, and they've got a four in a square, meaning that that can be up to four people playing Demolition Derby. And they do not work well you playing by yourself because it's just you. So there you go. <laughs> so just kind of throwing that out there. But again, a whole slew of scenarios to pick from and play with. Next up, we've got time trials here in Beam NG. And with time trials, what you get to do is you get to first select a map. So you'll click in the select map area and you will choose a map that comes with the game. Although uh, you can also download time trials that other people create. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if it has a little BeamNG logo, that means it came with the game and it was developed by BeamNG. If it does not have the little logo, that means that it is a mod and it was downloaded from the repository. So I can go in here and I can do a time trial. For example, um, we'll do West Coast. Once I pick a map, you will see that they, these are the possible routes that I can take in the game. So whatever you want to do in terms of uh, choosing a time trial. So just for the sake of argument, we'll do this particular street course. Why not? So now I have a map. I have a layout. Now I can pick a vehicle. You'll notice that it picked this uh, Belasco City police vehicle because the last thing I did, that was the last vehicle I was playing with in the scenario that you can see behind there. Um, but for the sake of argument, um, we'll just grab, sure, we'll grab a Bastion. Uh, how about the Hot Lap Special? <laughs> this ought to be a disaster. Let's see. We'll grab Flaming Orange here. Uh, so with the um, time trials, you can also, do you want to reverse the track? Do you want it to be a rolling start? How many laps do you want it to do and what time of day? I'm just going to let it roll. Also, it'll keep track of your best time. So uh, 
that's pretty cool. You can race against yourself. If I'm not mistaken, I think there's a way to tie that into a global best times as well. Uh, if not, then that's probably something they will be doing. All right, and much like with the campaigns and the scenarios, you were dropped in at a starting position. And then once you accelerate, then that will start the timer. So I'm going to start to accelerate. It's going to count me in. There we go. Come around the corner. And there will be checkpoints along the way. You'll notice them because they are red those red beacons. Whoa, okay, not paying attention to the road. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Anark. This is how I play. All right, so I'm gonna hit R to reset. I'm gonna leave that in there. Why not? You know, you might you might as well see what it's like to play horribly because that's why you're here, right? Okay, so let's try this again. This time I'll try to pay more attention to the road than the uh, giant beacons that are heading up that way. So once again. I can come around here and as you pass through each one that is a checkpoint and so you see up in the upper right hand corner it gives you your time for that particular checkpoint and you keep on rolling so we go up through here oh that's probably not going to be good for my car probably not I'm assuming I go up yep I had I paid attention to the arrows so one of the big things you got to do with these time trials is uh, pay attention to where you're going. Oh, as I was saying. Oh, boy. That's not going to be good. Oh, my engine is damaged. <laughs> uh, you get the general idea. Don't, don't worry about the gameplay. It's, it's the idea that we're after. And so that is what you do with time trials. Essentially, we would uh, run around here and complete two laps in an ideal world and uh, once we are done it'll give us a time and we can either attempt to beat ourselves or if you've got more folks playing at home with you then they can take a turn and you guys can try to beat each other's score so there you go one thing uh, about this is that it will not tell you how many checkpoints you have to go in scenarios it will actually tell you how many checkpoints you've uh, reached and how many more you've got to go but in time trial you have no earthly idea so I'm hoping that's something that eventually they will be able to monitor and adjust and fix and I think okay so yellow so we've completed one lap yay so there you go and that is time trial All right, similar to time trial, we have bus routes. With bus routes, you have to, or routes, depending on how you say it, uh, but you have to choose a map. So I'll just pick Italy. Sure, why not? Uh, so once I select the map there, then I can choose the route or route based on uh, the map that I chose. So I chose Italy. You can see that these are the different paths I can take with my bus. We're going to do this one, select that, and then by default, it's going to pick the city bus. You can go in here, pick a bus, and choose the bus that you would like if you didn't want the one that it picked for you. So I'm going to do that bus instead. And um, I'm actually going to try with traffic. And let's play the game. All right, once you get spawned into your uh, bus stop then uh, much like scenarios and everything else you are given the start button once you start to accelerate then that will kick things off so here we go three two one go notice that it will tell you where to go which is very handy and again you're going to want to uh now, I do have tra traffic spawn. Well, okay, bad camera angle. Bad camera angle. I don't think I swung out enough. Woo that was kind of ugly. All right, here we go. So, here we go. Now, one of the other cool things about this is the front of the bus shows you the route for this particular bus, which is very, very cool. Now, you'll notice that here I've got 
the red zone where I need to stop the bus. So it's going to tell me, notice that it is guiding me in here. Sorry, I'm stop the bus. All right, so I can kneel the bus with the G key. Notice that the bus is tilting to the side. I hit O to open the doors. The doors, whoops, open up. Theoretically, passengers are getting in. We close the doors. We raise the bus. You can see it is up. And we are ready to proceed to the next stop, except there is a traffic jam in front of us. Um, hello. Come on, people. You guys are going to have to get out the way. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Who put pipes in the middle of the road? That's what I want to know. Who's, who's in charge of this horrid construction drive? Okay, so this is the final stop. And we will pull up here. Oops. A little bit more. There we go. So we stop the bus. Kneel the bus. Open the doors. And they are out of here. And I believe that will be the end of our bus run success. You reached the final stop. Took us five and a half minutes. And we got a gold medal. Actually, I think we always get a gold. But anyway, <laughs> so, so there you go. You could retry this if you want to on some of these items, such as scenarios and time trials, bus routes. Uh, you get the option to either retry then you may also get the option to free roam, which means you can just drive freely from this point, go back to the main menu, or you can uh, it bring back to scenarios, which this one should technically take you back to the bus route option, but it does not. It actually takes you to scenarios. But anyhow, that is bus routes in Beam NG Drive. Up next, we've got the Light Runner scenarios and for light runner uh, those are generally relegated to glow city you can however pick a different layout if you want to uh, so for example if i want to do a neon course i can do a neon course uh, i can also pick my vehicle that's going to show you vehicles that have the power glow uh, so you can pick one of those i'll just keep it with the sbr uh, power glow here and again, I can tell it how many laps I want to do, and I'm just going to hit play. And with Light Runner, it is much like the other scenarios, etc., that we've seen. Except, as you can see, we are definitely in a cool, futuristic, glow environment. Very, very cool. And so you just drive around the track and see how long you can survive and how well you do. All right, for the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to look at the track builder. So I've loaded up the plane grid pure just so we have an open area for us to work in. And I can come to track builder and my options are to start it here or I can switch to glow city. Um, I'm just going to start it right here. And once you load up the track builder, then here you can actually make your own tracks. There are a series of options that you have. So for example, I can uh, click the forward and it will add pieces. I can turn, I can add, I can turn, I can add. Uh, I can also increase or decrease the length of each piece. So I have longer tracks, so that way I'm not dealing with shorter pieces. Uh, I can also bank the track. So if I wanted to bank it a little bit, I've just twisted that completely. Then I can actually move ahead a piece and then I can actually bank it back the other way if I want to. Uh, there are other things you can do. You can change the height so I can raise it up. So as you can see, I'm raising it up here and I can use my WASD keys to move. So if I move and again, if I raise up, you can see that I am raising up this track. Now it's totally up to you if you want to try to get your track to come back around and make actual loops in a circuit, or if you just want it to be a one-off, you can make it do pretty much whatever you want to do. I've got other videos that talk about the track builder, so you may want to go see those if you really, really want to get into uh, what the track builder does. 
All right, what we're going to talk about now whoops, is the replay mode, which is where you can record what's going on in your game and then use the playback to either watch what was happening in your game from different angles and or record with your screen recorder the different angles in order to put together, say, a video. So in order to start the replay mode, you're going to hit Alt-R, and you'll notice in the top corner it says that it is recording a new replay so everything that is going on in the game right now the vehicles going by my truck driving along all of this stuff is being recorded in the replay mode and i'm going to take that dude out i'm going to crash him for no reason whatsoever <laughs> drive down the road some more i believe there's going to be some cops coming oh we just smashed the cop as we come to a halt here and Weirdly, this cop is not after me. That's very, very strange. But anyway, that's the way that is. So I'm going to hit Alt-R, and that is going to save that replay. So everything we just did is now being recorded. Right? Now, in order to play back a replay, though, you have to have the replay UI installed on your screen to do that. Oh, yeah, now you're after me. <laughs> Great, now, now I'm busted. After I already quit the replay. All right, anyway, uh, we're going to go to UI Apps and the pencil to edit, then click the plus to add, and then you're going to come over to search, and you're going to start to search for replay. So if I start typing R-E-P-L, there is replay, Click on that, and it's going to add it to your screen. Now, where it puts it on your screen is anybody's guess. In my case, though, we see it over here on the left, and it's got the four little arrows, so I can drag this over. And I like to put it kind of in the middle, uh, near the bottom, just so I can get to it easy, but it's not necessarily in the way. And then click the green check mark to put it on your screen, and then hit Escape and Escape again. And now... We're back in the game, and I have my replay tool here. Now, in order to watch a replay, you're going to click on the little folder, and this will bring up a list of any of the replays that you have saved. So in this case, I'm actually looking for the second one. And so what I want to do is I'm going to click it, and notice that when I do that, it automatically starts playing. Now, I can hit Escape. A couple of times and you'll notice that it is walking through the time of my recording now what you're going to notice is if I don't move my mouse at all during the replay remember if you remember when we first recorded this we looked back at these different vehicles and right now I'm not moving my mouse at all this is one of the cool things about the replay tool is that you can change your camera views, change your camera angles as you're watching the replay. Now, when the replay gets to the end where I stopped the replay, then it will actually pause all of the physics and that's the end of the replay. So to start it over again, I can simply just hit J to unpause and it will pick it back up again. So now this time, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to move the mouse around and so I can watch this replay from whatever angles I want to, or for that matter, okay, we're about to hit this car. Boom, baby. For that matter, I can actually change cameras. So if I want to go to the driver camera, I can pick the driver camera of this replay. And again, it's just going to keep replaying what I've done over and over again. Hello, Mr. Ossifer. All right. So it doesn't matter what I do. The replay lets you view your footage from any angle that you want to. All right, let's talk about the repository a little bit. In the repository, this is where you will find all kinds of mods that people have made for the game. And the repository is considered the official place to get mods for BeamNG. You can get mods from other places, but there is no guarantee that those will work uh, technically, there's no guarantee these will work either, um, but these are ones that are considered uh, official mods for the game. Let's just say we want to do the Formula B, 
I can click on the plus to subscribe. That will download the mod and add it to your mod manager that we'll look at here in just a second. All right, so once it's downloaded, you see it's got a green check mark. I can come over to my mods manager and you notice it is in the list. Now, anytime you have a mod that has the orange circle with a line a horizontal line that means that that mod is actually activated and you can use it if it has the slanted line through it that means that the mod is on your computer but it is not activated and it will not show up in the system until you activate it so these are activated ready to go by the way if you want to change that I can notice that when I point to it it says deactivate this mod now it's got a slash through it, so it is deactivated, indicated by the red highlighted text here. Also, though, I can come over here, and now it says activate it, and I can turn it back on. So this is where you go for your mods. Likewise, you have automation mods uh, from the game called Automation. That's a separate game. You can download it if you want to. It allows you to create vehicles, and then you can export those vehicles and bring them into BeamNG. These ones are ones that other people have already done. So, for example, if I wanted to grab this Vortal uh, vehicle here, then I can click plus. It'll allow me to subscribe to this particular mod, and then it will show up as a vehicle that I can play in the game. And we'll see that if you get to the free roam mode or really any of the other modes that allow you to choose the vehicle that you want to drive. Just like repository mods, once this vehicle is downloaded, it will have a green check mark and it will show up in your mods manager. All right, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this new user guide helps start you off. If you're a brand new user to Beam NG, gives you some things to look at, some things to think about, some things to play with inside the game. Got any questions, problems, suggestions, horror stories? Feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. Special thanks to Hero of God, Gamer Gall, and Los Wilco for supporting me on Patreon. Special thanks to Connie C for being a channel member. I appreciate that so, so much. I'm David Anark. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.